Learning jazz standards is essential to learning jazz. In fact, this goes for any genre of music that you want to play. If you want to learn how to play like that, you need to learn the songs that belong to that style of music. And in jazz, this is certainly the case. You need to learn a lot of different songs and it will really help you grow as a player to be able to navigate several of the different songs that we have in this beautiful genre of music. And you don't want to do it the same way that I did it because the first time I learned a jazz standard, I spent eight to 10 weeks of intense work trying to figure out how to play over one song. And there is a more efficient way to do it. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. My name is Jens Larsen, learn jazz, make music. This video is maybe a little bit geared towards the people that are trying to learn the first few songs or are still working on the first 10 to 20 standards and really building a repertoire, trying to find an efficient way of doing this. And if you're already working on learning standards, you can use this as a checklist as well, as a way of checking out how you're working and maybe you can improve the way that you're working. Or maybe you can also leave a comment on this video if you have a better way of working than what I'm going over here. When it comes to picking a song, you want to be as realistic as possible. So if you're listening to a song and thinking, well, I want to learn this one, but I don't know how any of these chords really work. And there are a lot of them, or this theme is going to take me half a year to learn to play in just a medium tempo. Well, then you might want to pick another song. So don't start with Giant Steps. Don't start with Donna Lee. Find something that you can easily play so that you really can focus on learning the song and improvising on it. And you don't have to just practice for hours and hours just to get through the first chorus. For this video, I'm going to use Take the A Train as an example. This is a really simple tune, but it's also definitely a tune that you want to know. It actually has a theme that's a little bit challenging, but it's also usually within reach for most people. And of course, if you want to have some more ideas on different songs that you can check out, then check out my other video where I'm going over my top 10 of easy jazz standards to start learning. I think it also seems kind of obvious that if you want to learn a song, you want to listen to it. But actually, this is something that a lot of people are missing. And that's a pity because you can literally save hours of practice if you try to just listen to the song a few times before you try to learn it. It really save you a lot of time when it comes to internalizing the song. And also because in the long run, you might want to move away from learning songs from lead sheets and real books and then just really just start learning them by ear simply because it's a quicker way to internalize them if you're able to do so and they also tend to just stick much better in your memory. Personally, I often try to also find some vocal versions of songs and that's just because if you have the vocals, if you have the lyrics, then you have a way of also phrasing the theme that's much more natural. And I find that it's easier to actually learn the melody if I have the lyrics there as well, even if I don't completely know the lyrics. This third step, which is actually still without picking up our instrument, is to analyze the song. This might be a little bit tricky if you're not used to music theory. The only thing you want to figure out in the beginning is probably just what key is this in. If you start with that, and also because if you're, especially if you're a beginner, you want to play pieces that are in a key, that are tonal and not too complicated. And most jazz standards are in fact tonal and not too complicated. So just pick one. And then you want to figure out what the key is. You can want to figure out what are the different chords related to this key. I have some videos that are going over this. And if you're trying to just figure this out with a simple song and you're not sure about something, then one place that you can go and ask is well, you can ask in the comment section of this video, of course, but you can also join the Facebook group, the Jazz Guitar Insiders Facebook group. It's a really friendly group and we have more than 2000 members and there are a lot of people who know a lot of stuff and they will be happy to also answer if you post a question like this. And finally, we get to playing the song. Of course, you just want to play the song. You also just want to improvise over it. But there are also a few things that you want to think about that you want to get right the first time around because it's going to really save you a lot of time so that you're not messing up your solos all the time. And these kind of things are what I'm going to cover in these exercises. Now, you want to do the exercises, but you also want to play the song and just try to improvise over it because there is really also something that you're just only going to learn if you're actually trying to play the music. Even if you play a few wrong notes here and there, doesn't matter, you can, you can solve it along the way, you can fix those problems, but you also want to keep on working on playing music. It is important that you're able to play everything in one position. So if you're starting out and you want to learn a song, then pick a position. So if you can figure out what the key is, 
pick a position where that key is easy for you to play and you have a good overview of what is going on. And then you can start finding all the other things that you need while you're playing through the form. Check out where they are in this position. And this is just important because you don't want to have places in the song where you have to think about where to go or where that arpeggio or where that scale is. You want to have a place where you can figure that out in advance so you can think while you're practicing and just focus on music when you're actually playing music. This is really important and it's also something that a lot of people get wrong along the way. You also want to make sure that you can play the melody. We mostly improvise from chord symbols. And that's because the way that we think about it, we kind of reduce the melody to chord symbols and then we're improvising off of those. But actually, it's a lot easier for us to hear the melody than it is to hear the chord symbols, at least for most of us. And that means that if you can really play the melody well, if you know it by heart and you can hear that while you're playing the song, then you have something to hold on to. And the melody is going to tell you what chord is happening, what everything sounds like, what you're playing now, what does it sound like against the melody, which is actually also what it sounds like against the chords. It's also gonna tell you what the tempo is, what the time is, and where you are in the form. So in that way, just knowing the melody really well and having that in the back of your mind when you're playing is something that's extremely useful and really strong for keeping the form and keeping the time. And of course, if you're playing a song, you need to be able to comp that song as well. So that means that you need to be able to play the chords. And you want to also spend a little bit of time getting used to just playing the chords, comping through the song and hearing what that sounds like. This is all a part of being able to hear the melody, hear the form, hear the song and hear the harmony. And this is something that's very important to get into your ears and into your system. And it's also just very practical to actually be able to comp the songs that you want to play. When you're improvising on a song, especially in the beginning, and you really want to connect with the harmony and the song itself, then you want to be able to play arpeggio notes in your solo. So you want to be able to play the notes of the chords that are happening at that point in the song. That means that you also want to check out all the arpeggios for the song in time, in the position that you already picked. So that's a great exercise to just go through, and it's actually not that difficult to get started doing this and it will really teach you a lot and it will really help you get an overview of the notes that you want to hit when you're soloing and just really tell you what it sounds like in the form as well. And if you start getting really good at this then you also want to take this exercise a little bit further and then just improvise freely only using the chord tones. I have this clip from Papanthini where he's talking about how he thinks that's a great way to create some more interesting melodies uh, than just running up and down scales and I think that of course is extremely true. And if you get familiar with playing the arpeggios through the piece, then you also want to try working on improvising only using the chord tones, just the basic chord tones and moving through the harmony. You can learn a lot from that and you can also play some more interesting melodies than just running up and down scales. And of course there are other really useful exercises that you can take through the song that will help you just hearing the harmony and finding material to play, stuff that is flexible that you can work with in your solos. Some of the ones that I would suggest you try working with would be the Barry Harris scale exercise, which is essentially just taking for each chord, you run up the scale of that chord from the root up to the seventh, and then just take that exercise through the entire progression for all the chords. Uh, another good one is to do sort of these Coltrane patterns through the form also, that can also just give you some material to work with, stuff that you can play when you're soloing, and you don't have to play it exactly like that. It also adds a little bit of freedom to what you're doing. But of course, there might be other exercises that I didn't talk about. And if you have a good exercise, a great idea for this, then leave a comment on this video. If you want some more suggestions when it comes to choosing jazz standards, then check out the video that I made where I'm going over the top 10 easy jazz standards that I would suggest you start learning if you're looking for repertoire. And they're also really easy to learn and you kind of want to have them in your repertoire. And of course, when you check out the video, then you can also let me know if you have another suggestion for something that should have been on that list or maybe something that I can add to my own repertoire. 